The next day, Sergio put on his new watch and went to work in his new car. Nice wheels, Clive said when he walked into Sergio's office a little after nine. This position must pay a lot more than I thought it did. Close the door, Sergio said. He learned his lesson from Violet. Telling people about his lottery win could be tricky. Clive raised his eyebrows and closed the door. He flopped into one of Sergio's visitor chairs. What's the big secret? Did you rob a bank? No, Sergio grinned. He lowered his voice. I won the lottery. Clive laughed. Good one. Really? I bought a ticket because Sergio stopped himself. He'd been about to tell Clive about Lucky Boy. He again got the strong feeling he should keep that bit to himself. He covered his near mistake by saying, Because I had a whim, and I won. Clive shook his head. Good for you, he spotted Sergio's watch. Nice bling. Sergio flushed. I deserve some bling. Sure you do. So what's next? Oh, I know. How about you buy your good friend Clive a swimming pool? Unlike Violet, Clive was kidding. Or at least Sergio hoped he was. He decided to go with a kidding response. Ha! <laughs> Sergio rolled his eyes. Win your own lottery. Then you can buy your own swimming pool. Party pooper. When I buy my swimming pool, you can come and use it. Are you buying one? Sergio shrugged. Actually, I'm not sure what I'm going to do next. I need to ask. Oops, he let it slip it again. He almost let it slip again. Clive looked at him. Who are you going to ask? Your mummy. Sergio flipped a pen at Clive. Funny. No, not to my mummy. I mean, just ask, you know, in general, like, ask my intuition, ask the universe, like that. When do you get spiritual? Having money is an exulting experience. Clive laughed. Well, even so, you'd better get to work. Dale was on a rampage yesterday about having to pick up your load because you are out and sick, and the Jenkins project is kind of a mess. Sergio frowned. I'm not criticising, Clive said. I couldn't do what you've been doing half as well as you have, but I'm just warning you that the powers that be aren't... Wait, that the powers that be aren't going to care about your car or your bling. Sergio sighed. You're right, obviously. I made a mess of things a couple days ago, I need to fix it. Clive stood, leaned over Sergio's desk, and raised his hand. High five. Sergio slapped Clive's hand. I'm honestly happy for you, Clive said. Enjoy. Just don't cut off your nose to spite your face. What does that mean? Sergio asked. I'm not really sure. It's just what my mother said whenever I did something dumb in reaction to something. Actually, I don't think it's applicable here, but whatever. Just be careful with your decisions. Yes, Dad. Clive laughed and left Sergio's office. Sergio stared at his watch for several minutes and then got to work. And he was still working long after everyone else left, even Violet. She wasn't speaking to him. It was after midnight when he left the building and headed for his... Where was his car? His bright new... His nice new bright and spiny shorts car wasn't in his parking space. What the heck? Sergio turned a full circle in his empty parking spot. Then he sighed, went back inside his office and called the police. The police officer who took his stolen car report was nice enough to give Sergio a ride home. That was kind of fun. Sergio enjoyed listening to the chatter on the police radio and he liked the way the leather creaked when he moved in his seat. He wasn't as keen on the weird smell coming from the back seat, a combination of bleach and something sour smelling. He didn't ask about it. Sorry you got your car stolen the first full day you owned it, the young officer said when he pulled outside Sergio's building. His name tag read Neil which Sergio assumed was a last name. That bites the big one. Sergio unbuckled his seatbelt and turned toward Officer Neil. He noticed the officer's buzz cut was recent. He could see white skin between his brown hair and the tan line on his neck. And you don't think I'll get it back? It's probably out of the state by now, Neil said, or it's in parts. His voice broke often, like a teenager going through puberty. Sergio shook his head. Well, at least it was insured. He reached for the passenger door handle. Yeah, but they get you there too. You'll get blue book for it, but it won't be that much. Uh, it won't be as much as you paid for it. You're out taxes and license and all that. Sergio smiled as Neil has at he as Sergio smiled at Neil as he pushed the door open. Sorry. Well, you're a ray of sunshine. Neil laughed. Sorry, this job tends to create pessimists. Sergio marvelled that not Officer Neil had been on the job long enough to become a pessimist. He wondered what Officer Neil's goals were. Did he have a big dream? Thanks for the ride, Sergio said as he got out of the squad car. He waved as Neil drove by, and he went in the front entrance of his building, whistling. 
He wasn't going to let this get him down. It was just a little setback. His luck had changed. Or maybe not. As he got in the elevator and pushed the button up for the fourth floor, his neighbours dashed up behind him and shoved her way past him. He flicked a look of annoyance at her. She mistook it for something else. What are you looking at? Thunderfeet snapped as she pounded on the fifth floor button. Wearing tight exercise pants and a sports bra, she must have thought he was admiring her. But he wasn't. Not that she was bad looking, she was actually cute. Slender and just curvy enough, with blonde hair and a nice face. But she was too tall for him. She was at least 5 feet 10 to his 5 feet 7. Oh god, 5 feet 7! Oh. <laughs> Not to mention her personality ruined everything about her looks. Nothing, said Sir, uh, Sergio said as the elevator made a clunking sound and started to rise. Nothing at all. Thunderfeet didn't smell good. She smelled like sweat and cigarette smoke. He concentrated on breathing through his mouth. She sniffed and looked him at him sideways. You better not make wake me up again tonight. Sergio glanced at her incredulous, incredulously. Me? Wake you up? She glared at him. He ignored her as the elevator doors opened and he got out on his floor. One of the cheap beige carpet squares that covered the hallways in the building was sticking up just outside the elevator and he tripped over it. He managed to catch himself, but he staggered a few feet before he did. He heard her mutter, loser, as the elevator clo doors closed behind him. His shoulders tightened as he stared, uh, sorry, as he started down the hall. And by the time he was at his door, his good mood was slipping away. And just as he took out his keys, Mrs. Bailey threw her door open behind him and sang out, I just made oatmeal raisin cookies. Sergio whirled around and yelled, I hate raisins. Mrs. Bailey, a, a plastic wrap covered plate of cookies extended out in front of her, drew back. Her face bunched up in the middle like someone pulled on a drawstring attached to a skin. Her lower lip quivered. Well, why have you never said so? I was being polite, Sergio shouted, but I don't feel like being polite right now. In fact, I don't feel like being here right now. I just want to be left alone. Mrs. Bailey's eyes moistened. She nodded her head and quietly retreated into her apartment. Aww. <laughs> Sergio felt like a jerk, but he also felt exhilarated. Saying what he wanted was very freeing. Inside his apartment, Sergio went through his usual post-work routine. When he finished, now wearing his sweats and t-shirt, he looked at Lucky Boy, who still sat, all jaunty and bright, on top of the bureau. So, what should I do now? Sergio asked the toy. Everyone who's someone should have a house, Lucky Boy said. Sergio stared at the toy's wide smile, and he just began smiling just as wide. What a great idea, his own house. Why not buy his own house? He had plenty of money now for a down payment. He said so to Lucky Boy, praising him with, You're brilliant. Lucky Boy wasn't done throwing out ideas. Cash is king, Lucky Boy said. Go from bad to good. That's even more brilliant. This was the toy's best idea yet. He could buy an inexpensive fixer-upper with cash, gut it, and then completely redesign it. He could use all the skills he'd honed at the firm to create a true masterpiece of reinvention. You are so smart, Sergio told Lucky Boy. He gave the toy a pat on one of his rosy cheeks. Lucky Boy giggled. Sergio headed to the phone. He needed to contact a real estate, estate agent. To go places, you gotta have wheels, Lucky Boy said. Sergio stopped. He turned to Lucky Boy and laughed. Well, I'm glad someone in this room is thinking. I forgot I have no car, he frowned. What should I get this time? The same thing? You should have bigger and better, Lucky Boy said. Oh no. Sergio punched the air. Perfect, you're absolutely right. I'll get the big pickup. He turned her head toward the phone again. That's what I'll do first. Bro, get something for your girlfriend. <laughs> Otherwise you won't have a girlfriend anymore. <clears throat> and don't get bigger and better. That's the mo that's the worst idea after getting your car stolen. And he did. In the morning, he drew drove his new black eight-cylinder extra cab long bed lifted pickup with massive tyres to work. Yeah, it was a Saturday, and he wished he could be out looking at houses. But since he'd missed work on Thursday, he was totally behind. Even without missing that day, he'd have to work today. 
Now he was going to have to work tomorrow too. When he parked in his spot, um, he decided it looked even more impressive than the red sports car. Seeing the shiny black and chrome road monster sitting in his reserve spot almost made up for being at the office on Saturday for the third week in a row. Sergio look, uh, locked his truck and gave the hood a pat. He'd had the dealer add an upgraded security system to his new truck so he knew he'd find the, the truck here waiting for him at the end of the day. If someone tried to take this baby, that someone was going to have a very bad day. The dealer had been very happy to sell Sergio the security upgrade, but he'd been strangely against Sergio's request to have a full suspension lift added to the truck. Sergio would have thought the guy would be happy to make more money, but instead he warned, a lifted truck is a tilt or tip hazard. You'd be amazed at how easy it is to roll a truck when it's lifted. Sergio thanked him for the warning, but told him to do it anyway, and he was glad he did. Sergio strutted into the office, feeling like he was at least three inches taller than he was before. He felt even taller than when he got to his office and received a phone call from his insurer. They were going to pay out the full purchase price of his stolen vehicle and the taxes and licensing costs were being refunded because they didn't go through before the car was taken. So much for Officer Neil's pessimism. Ha! <laughs> Sergio was on a roll. Or maybe not. When Sergio got off the phone, he looked up to find Violet standing in his office doorway. Because it was Saturday, she was dressed casually. She wore tight jeans with a flouncy hem and a filmy yellow blouse with a feathered fringe. As she tapped her foot, the flouncy hem bounced and her fringe danced. I knew I'd find you here, Violet said. Oh, hi Violet. Don't, oh, Vi hi Violet me. Sergio frowned. He really needs to get back to work. What's wrong? What's wrong? Violet uncrossed her arms and stomped to his desk. She recrossed her arms and looked down at him. Did you buy me a present yet? Sergio pressed his lips together. Oops, he hadn't even thought of it. I've been really busy, Sergio said. Violet snorted. You're not really going to try that, are you? With that ridiculous truck sitting outside? It had to take time to buy that monstrosity. You could manage the time to go to the dealership and you couldn't pop into a jewellery store and get me a little something. I'm sorry, Violet. I have no excuse. I've just been so wrapped up in the excitement of it all. Wrapped up in yourself, you mean. Is that so bad? What? Being selfish? Yeah, that's bad. Sergio glared at her. If it's selfish to be wrapped up in yourself, then you're kind of the pot calling the kettle back black, aren't you? What? What kind of insult is that? You've never heard the idiom, the pot calling the kettle black? Sure, but she raised her eyebrows. Are you calling me selfish? If the, sh if the shoe fits, well, screw you and your stupid idioms. Before Sergio could say anything else, Violet stormed out of his office. For several seconds, Sergio stared after her. Then he shrugged and went back to work. What a dick. <laughs> I'm sorry to swear, but this is actually annoying me. This is, this is annoying me. <laughs> Come on, Sergio. Are you really that stupid? That's the thing that annoys me about these stories, the fact that the characters are sometimes just really dumb. Um, at the end of a very long day, Sergio dragged his tired body to his impressive new truck. He was frustrated. Even if he returned tomorrow and worked all day, he'd still be way behind on Monday morning. At this rate, he was never going to be able to look for a house, much less have time to renovate one. He knew he wasn't home enough these days to really worry about what his home looked like, but he was tired of living under thunder feet and tired of living across the hall from Mrs. Bailey. Besides, he deserved to live someplace better than this cubic apartment building with its cheap carpet squares. But how can he move and work? There weren't enough hours in the day. And what was he going to do about Violet? As soon as, she, as, soon as he changed clothes, Sergio asked, sorry, asked Lucky Boy this very question. You deserve to be happy, Lucky Boy said. I agree, Sergio said. But he sat down on the edge of his bed. Violet doesn't make me happy. This was a little bit of a revela revelation. Huh, Sergio said. He thought back over his year with Violet. Had she ever made him happy? Not exactly. Not really. No, not at all. Having a girlfriend made him feel good. He'd never had one in high school or college. All he'd done was pine for that out-of-reach Sophia in high school and in college, and he'd never had the time for dating. He'd gone out a few times since then, but Violet was his first steady girl, 
and that's why he dated her, not because she made him happy, but because she kept going out with him. Having a steady girlfriend made him feel impressive. What should I do about Violet? Sergio asked Lucky Boy again. If it's broken, fix it or get rid of it, Lucky Boy said. That seemed like good advice. Did Sergio want to fix things with Violet? No, he did not. Okay, then the solution was simple. He leaned over to his nightstand and picked up the phone. Oh god, he dialed Violet. When she picked up, it was obvious she'd been sleeping. Hello? She breathed into the phone. Violet, I... What time is it, Sergio? Can't you wait until a reasonable time to call and apologise? Sergio rolled his eyes. I'm not calling to apologise, I'm calling to break up with you. What? It sounded like you just said break up with you. That is what I said. I don't want to go out with you anymore. Violet was silent, but she was still on the phone. He could hear her breathing. I should have realised it when you didn't buy anything. If I loved you and I and really wanted to be with you, buying you something should have been a no-brainer, but I... Forget you, Sergio, Violet said. You're not good enough for me anyway. You're a funny-looking man, and I'm too much of a catch for you. Violet slammed down her phone, and the line went dead. Sergio sat for a second to see if he felt bad. He didn't. He looked at Lucky Boy. Great advice. Lucky Boy, Lucky Boy giggled. Okay, so Sergio's girlfriend problem was solved. But what about his job? How could he be happy and work the kind of hours he was working? What should I do about my job? Sergio asked Lucky Boy. Oh no. Oh yeah, Lucky Boy is literally going to strip everything from his life just to take it all away. Oh my god. He's going to say get rid of the job. I, I bet you. He's going to say get rid of the job. Better things are on the horizon. Oh yeah. Oh my god. Oh no. Sergio sank down into his bed. Wow. He'd never thought he stared at Lucky Boy and Lucky Boy's big blue eyes stared back. Why hadn't Sergio thought of that? Why was he still at his job? He hadn't been happy at the firm for some time and instead of looking for something else, he just applied for the project manager job. He talk about thinking inside the box. He had to get out of the box, way out of the box. Sergio stood and started pacing back and forth by his bed. The seed of an idea was sprouting in his mind. What if he turned and looked at Lucky Boy? What do you think of me starting my own business? You deserve to be your own boss, Lucky Boy said. It would be impressive, Sergio grinned. Yes, it would. He thought about his dad. Even though Tony never said so, he was disappointed in his son's career. Sergio felt like every time Tony asked his stupid skyscraper question, this country runs on the backbone of entrepreneurism. <laughs> God, I can't say that. Entrepreneurism. Entrepreneurialism. There you go. Tony liked to say. Men like me keep our nation strong. If Sergio wanted to make his dad proud, he needed to be an entrepreneur. And he knew just how to do it. But first, he had to quit his job, which he did the next morning. You're really quitting? Clive said when he walked into Sergio's office 15 minutes after Sergio informed Dale he was done with the new job. What the hell are you playing at? Dale had asked. The top of his bald head turned red as he yelled, You apply for a pivotal job. Get it. Make hash of it. And then you quit. You realise you're, do you're done at this firm too, right? Sergio nodded. Well, yes, that was going to be the next thing I told you I'm quitting entirely. What the hell is wrong with you? Dale shouted. You're our brightest architect. You're throwing your career away. Sergio shrugged. You can think that if you want, I'm going to go into business for myself. Dale guffawed. Oh, that's rich. You know, you'll, you'll be homeless in no time. Sergio <laughs> shrugged again. Nope, I'm going to be a successful, impressive entrepreneur. Dale shook his head and strode out of Sergio's office. Yes, Sergio said to Clive now. I'm really quitting. Clive leaned against the wall and watched Sergio put his personal belongings in a cardboard box. What are you going to do? Get outside the box? Clive laughed and pointed at Sergio's arms, which were both currently inside the box on his desk. Sergio smiled too. You know what I mean. Not exactly, but I wish you luck. Oh, I have a lot of luck now. I have lucky boy, he laughed. And he noticed his laugh sounded oddly, a little like Lucky Boy's giggle. Oh no, oh no, that, that's foreshadowing right there. He's going to turn into Lucky Boy or something. Oops, he hadn't meant to say that. Clive frowned. 
You're a lucky boy? Is that what you just said? Sergio blinked and lied. Sh sure. Clive held out the fist, and Sergio bumped it with his. Keep in touch, Clive said. I will, Sergio said. But he didn't. He had too much going on. For one thing, he had to find the right place to renovate into a new home. Sergio thought finding a fixer-upper was going to be easy. The town was full of them, and after years of working on residential renovations, he knew plenty of real estate agents. Which one should he call? Sergio sat at his small retro dining room table and ate Kung Pao chicken out of the um, carton while he pondered his upcoming house hunt. Lucky Boy sat on the table in front of him. It occurred to Sergio as he ordered his dinner that leaving the toy in the bedroom was a little discourteous. After all, Lucky Boy had been the catalyst for a lot of great things in Sergio's life, and that was only in a few days. Here Sergio was, a man of leisure who was about to embark on an impressive entrepreneurial adventure, and he was rudely ignoring the little guy who had made it all possible, and so he brought Lucky Boy out to join him for dinner. I wish I could share this with you, Sergio said to Lucky Boy, but I don't think toys eat. Sergio forked up some of the spicy chicken. He chewed, swallowed, and mused. So, which real estate agent should I pick? Pretty is good, Lucky Boy said. Sergio looked at Lucky Boy. Well, aren't you a little Casanova? Didn't I just get rid of a girlfriend? Lucky Boy giggled. Are you saying I should find a better one? Lucky Boy giggled again. Again. Okay, Sergio said. Pretty. Let's see. He thought about the agents he knew. One of them, Eve, was very pretty. But he was also reasonably sure she was married. Pretty doesn't do us any good if she's married, he pointed out. You deserve a great girl who dotes on you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I do. Violet had never doted on him. Good riddance to her. Someone better was out there. He thought for a minute. He snapped his fingers. There was an agent called Claire Fredericks, who was petite and soft-spoken. They once had a conversation about science fiction, and she said she liked it. That was a good start, wasn't it? As far as Sergio knew, she was single. He picked up the phone and called Claire to schedule an appointment to look at houses the next day. Sergio's father would like Claire. Sergio decided as he, sat, uh, as he sat with her at a conference table in her real estate office. Not only was Claire small and slender, but she was dark-haired too. She looked Italian. Oh, <laughs> He didn't know if she, was, if she was, but she looked like it. And that would be good enough for Tony. And he could hear his mother now. Oh, the babies you could make together. She always said that when, when she tried to set him up with an Italian girl. What exactly did you have in mind? Claire asked, swivelling to face Sergio. Sergio decided that Claire wasn't what most people would call pretty. Her features were a little too strong for that, but he thought she was eye-catching. She had a huge, somewhat almond-shaped, very dark brown eyes. She thought, the, she thought of them as comic book eyes. Claire's face would make a great superhero face. This close to her, he could smell her perfume, which was light but distinctive. It smelled like a combination of fruit and flowers, kind of citrusy and kind of sweet. He liked it. He had to force himself to think about houses instead of about Claire. I recently came into a substantial amount of money, Serge told her, and I want to leverage it into not just a home for me, but a multi-million dollar design business. To that end, I want something that needs a total overhaul, and I'm thinking something industrial maybe, something with massive architectural potential. Is there anything available in the old warehouse district, the part that was rezoned? Claire nodded several times. Oh, how exciting. I'd love to be a part of helping you build a multi-millionaire dollar business. And uh, I think your plan is excellent. Your design aesthetic is perfect for that kind of building we have. I didn't know you noticed my design aesthetic, Sergio said. He blushed. Claire smiled at him. I noticed more than I let on. Sergio smiled back at Claire. He was sure she was flirting with him. Claire cleared her throat. There are several properties that fit your description, but there's one in particular I think will be perfect for you. Do you want to go see it? Absolutely. They went to see it, and it was perfect. The perfect property was an old standalone warehouse that was just at the, site, the, at the edge of the area recently rezoned to residential. This meant it got the best of both worlds. It fit with the other warehouse rebuilds around it, but it also backed up to the lush greenery of the neighbouring, well-established residential area. At 5,500 square feet, the property was ideal for what Sergio wanted to do with it. 
which was to make a spacious living area with a lot of architectural wow and a adjoining office space with even more eye-catching structural features. The warehouse had a brick exterior, though it's in fantastic condition, and its interior, support beams and load-bearing walls look sound. Yes, it was an impressive building and Sergio absolutely deserved it, but it cost more than he'd planned to spend. Sergio did some calculations. He'd already gotten the insurance payout on the car and the refund of the tax and license fees. The truck hadn't cost as much as the sport car, but he was already there. Oh, so he's already there. If he bought this old warehouse, he was pretty sure he'd have enough to complete the renovations. Should he go for it? Of course he should. Let's make an offer, Sergio said to Claire. She clapped her hands, then got down to business, writing up the offer. I'll go present this right now. I expect the owner to accept it. Do you want to go to dinner to celebrate when he, when he does? Sergio blurted. Claire studied him for a moment. Then she did a cute little half shrug and said, sure. Sergio grinned. I'm so glad I called you. Claire smiled back. Me too. Aww. 